studying a game of polo with a headless goat and keen to get full marks on question four. Stay tuned, let me get you there. Help for edXL IGC is your English language, yes. Schofield on Shakespeare. So this question is out of 12. You need to show a perceptive understanding of the effects of language and structure and be reasonably technical in your analysis. Try to use some subject terminology for every quotation that you explore. There are 12 marks for this question, so try to analyse 12 quotations split into four different paragraphs. However, make sure that you're sharply focused on the question and don't just regurgitate generic analysis from your own annotations. Subject terminology is very important with this exam board. Make sure that your analysis is as technical as possible. This video is going to explore this question. How does the writer use language and structure to engage and interest the reader? Jot this down and consider the text in light of this question as it appears on screen at five second intervals. You may like to add additional annotations to your own copy of the text, choosing quotations particularly pertinent to this question. Let me talk you through my annotations, which you may like to add to your own copy of the text. Notice that we have the superlative best for the viewing point, which highlights just how excited and interested she is about the race that she's presumably heard so much about. This engages and interests us because of her enthusiasm. I think it's also notable about the change in the enthusiasm of the two locals. Look at the adverb, they've been never been interested in this before, but now that they are in charge of helping her film this event, they're suddenly fired up with enthusiasm. Look at this adjective phrase here, it suggests that they're suddenly brimming in energy. And this of course therefore makes it more interesting and engaging for us as readers. Within this section, notice how structurally the writer builds up interest by delaying the start of the race. Um, and we get a sense that the narrator is worried that it won't happen at all. Um, notice also in the second paragraph on screen, some of the images used. Um, look at the cloud of fumes and dust. Um, and that creates a very dramatic visual picture. I guess it also emphasizes that perhaps we're, we're in a non-Western um, location. Uh, we are of course in Pakistan and that implies just how dry and arid the landscape is there. Um, we've got some dramatic verbs in this section here. Um, of course the race is made more interesting and engaging in the fact that not only have we got the two donkey carts at the front but we've got a huge load of vehicles behind them. So we've got the verb roaring there which just highlights how much noise there is. Um, um, behind the donkey race and therefore in the race as a whole. Um, we can see also the skill of the young driver, um, Yacoub, um, and notice the verb we've got him revving up the engine, which again sort of creates a sense of excitement, almost as though he himself is about to take part in a race, and then he's inching the, the car out of the lay-by, and the verb inch there highlights very small, precise movements um, and shows his skill 
in order to position themselves strategically so that she is able to get the best view to film this particular race. There's a great deal of chaotic sound within this section which engages and interests the reader. Notice the tricolon there of the horns tooting, the bells ringing and the special rattles used just for this purpose there. Um, what we can see here is just how much of an event this race is. The horns tooting um, presumably may come from some of the 50 cars behind the donkey carts jostling for position and impatient to get in front of each other. Um, bells ringing though and the special rattles are likely to be used by spectators on the sidelines um, enjoying the, the almost carnival-esque atmosphere. Um, and it's interesting that the subordinate clause used just for this purpose really confirms that um, even supporters make things um, just for this day um, and they contribute to that really vibrant atmosphere. Um, interesting, the metaphor that this was Formula One without rules or a city centre rush hour gone anarchic. This emphasised, of course, the extraordinary speeds of both the donkey cart and the cars within it, but it also um, emphasises the chaos that it's without rules. So Formula One is very much um, a reasonably ordered, very, very fast raced with everyone going in the same direction. Um, the fact they're without rules suggests perhaps that there's far more crazy zigzags going on as cars are desperate to position themselves to see as much of the fun as possible. Occasionally, this passage interests and engages the reader through an understated ironic tone and we can see that in the first sentence here in this sort of very understated phrase unusual test of driving skills um, we might expect an unusual test of driving skills perhaps um, to include i don't know far more cones within a park where, where, um, within a car park perhaps asking that person to do far more reversing than would be expected but here, no, we have the chaos of this race and the dangers involved in the various manoeuvres of all the cars travelling at very, very high speed in order to see the donkey cart um, races. So this, of course, interests, interests and engages us. Notice also, structurally, um, the use of semicolons um, in order to split up the extraordinary remarkably skillful driving of Yacoub there um, a lot of different reactions and characteristics are required in order to keep the car towards the very top of the towards the very front of the race um, so that the narrator can film the action there's also a short simple sentence there towards the end of this paragraph in Yacoub loved it and that contrasts significantly to the longer more descriptive detailed sentences of the action and that interests and engages us in just highlighting the adrenaline of Yacoub as he drives this car and highlights just how much enthusiasm he has for doing so. After so much chaos so much excitement we have a shorter paragraph here um, and a very sudden and abrupt end to the race as seen in that simple sentence the race was over the race ends in a fairly comical way in that one of the donkey carts simply tumbles over um, and the use of bathos here is comic, comic and engaging after such an extended build-up um, and this interests and engages the reader as it is a twist that we were not expecting There's a clear shift at the beginning of this section in the simple sentence beginning with the conjunction and and that confirms that we're now shifting from the chaotic exciting action of the race um, to the subsequent arguments and recriminations and this interests and engages us this change of focus. We can see just as the race was really really loud 
um, you can see that so are the subsequent arguments. Notice the tricolon there. Voices were raised, fists were out, and tempers rising. And that confirms just how agitated every, all the people are. Many are sort of shouting. Many are threatening violence, possibly actually beginning to use violence. And many are finding themselves um, more and more worked up. This interests and engages us. Indeed, it's interesting and engaging that the threat of violence is so much that the two locals feel strongly that their Western that, that their Western film filmmaker should be protected and well away from that and needs to stay inside the car. Um, we get a sense of that volatile chaos in the phrasal verb of the two being swallowed up by the crowd. We just get a sense that, that she's looking out of the car and she cannot see them at all. Um, there are no sign. They just completely disappear. Um, notice again at the end that use of a understated, amused, ironic tone. Um, she finds out belatedly that one of them actually is too young to legally be able to drive. And this revelation engages and interests the reader because it confirms belatedly just how much danger all of them were within the car due to his lack of experience. Um, so at the end, when it says that, that the driver um, didn't have a license and could have caused a massive pileup, and then she says that this could have caused problems. Notice there's no adjectives before problems. Um, so it's very understated and, um, and quite amusing because actually it's much more than that. It's much stronger. These problems could have resulted in very serious injury and death. Time to write your own essay, which will be able to compare with mine. How does the writer use language and structure to engage and interest to the reader? Remember, four chunky paragraphs, each exploring three quotations. No intro, no conclusion. Get cracking and press pause now. How did you get on? Producer 12 out of 12 cracker. Time to compare your response to mine. The opening to the passage engages the reader by withholding information about an important sounding event. She writes, we drove off to find the best viewing points. The use of these superlative bests suggests that the narrator and the two men are keen to find an advantageous position from which to watch some kind of spectacle. However, we are only told at the end of the first sentence that it is a race, whilst the intriguing sounding involvement of donkeys is only revealed in the second sentence. The switch from narrative to dialogue also engages the reader, particularly when the narrator is told to climb inside the car boots. To film from a boot without a seatbelt sounds both unorthodox and potentially dangerous. The reader quickly becomes interested in why the narrator might be so invested in this race that she is prepared to forego usual safety precautions. Another point of interest is that previously disinterested local boys were fired up with enthusiasm about the race. This adjective phrase suggests they are suddenly brimming with energy about what may be to come. This in turn engages the reader, partly because it is the inverse of their usual reaction. When the race belatedly starts, the spectacle of donkey carts followed by countless vehicles also interests the reader. The donkey carts come just in front of a cloud of fumes and dirt. This metaphorical noun phrase creates a dramatic visual picture and implies an excitingly chaotic scene with poor visibility within an alien to the Western reader arid landscape. Meanwhile, the present participle roaring to describe the 50 vehicles behind the two donkey carts implies that the huge entourage of cars are producing a deafening noise and thrilling atmosphere. 
The sounds from this spectacle are described in further detail within the subsequent paragraph with the reference to horns tooting, bells ringing and special rattles. This tricolon suggests that there are a wide range of different loud sounds being emitted by hugely enthusiastic cheering race fans both in and out of their cars. Indeed, the special rattle is said to be used just for this purpose. This subordinate clause confirms the uniqueness and specialness of the event. It is so important that a particular type of rattle is made for supporters to help create a vibrant, rowdy atmosphere. The majority of readers will be intrigued by this atmosphere and chaotic sounding events and keen to read on to find out how the race develops. A particularly interesting part of the race is the fact that the donkey carts are pursued by countless vehicles driving dangerously in order to keep up and maintain the best view. The narrator makes reference to their young driver relishing this unusual test of driving skills. The ironic tone within the noun phrase engages the reader due to its understated description of an utterly chaotic scene. Meanwhile, the verb relish confirms just how much the young driver is enjoying the dangerous bedlam, which quietly amuses the reader. Within the same paragraph, the writer uses semicolons to separate the qualities and skills needed to survive the race intact. You need to be able to cut in front, quick reflexes, nerves of steel. Structurally, this emphasizes the diverse range of characteristics needed in order to maintain a good position of the race, whilst the imagery of nerves of steel suggests that the driver needs to be particularly cool-headed and calm in the face of danger, which interests the reader. It's also interesting that the donkeys amazingly do not appear to be distracted or disorientated by the chaos behind them. Most Western readers in particular would imagine that an animal might veer off course or become distressed surrounded by such carnage. However, the adverb amazingly confirms this is not the case, further causing the admiration of the reader. Following an anticlimactic end to the race, the final passage amuses and engages with its multiple descriptions of furious supporters shouting and complaining. This section commences with, and then the trouble began. The use of a simple sentence starting with the conjunction an signifies an engaging shift in focus from dramatic racing to enraged recriminations. The narrator states, voices were raised, fists were out and tempers rising. This tricolon confirms the exciting agitation of the crowd and that many are shouting angrily and threatening violence. The situation is so dire that the narrator is told to stay in the car whilst the two local men investigate. As they leave the car, they were swallowed up by the crowd. This phrasal verb confirms the chaotic density of the crowd and also implies the potential to be consumed completely within the pandemonium. Overall, the reader is engaged by the description of a cultural event as told by an outsider and interested by the ferocious passion demonstrated by seemingly a huge crowd of people in relation to the race and its results. So, how does this get 12 out of 12? Well, remember to use immediate topic sentences. This confirms to the examiner that you're focusing sharply on the question and aren't just narrating or regurgitating. Whether exploring language or structure, always include a short, trimmed if necessary, quotation. Always aim to use subject terminology post-quotation. Here, superlative, narrative, dialogue, adjective phrase. Aim to explore language in perceptive detail, which I do here when I unpick a cloud of fumes and dirt. This creates a dramatic visual picture and implies an excitingly chaotic scene with poor visibility within an alien, arid landscape. Varying your sentence openers can help your writing flow and enable you to contextualise your quotations. Rather than begin every sentence with the, Note the opening to the highlighted sentences following an anticlimactic end to the race as they leave the car. You may also like to consider including a summative concluding sentence at the end of your fourth paragraph beginning with overall.
This has been Schofield on Shakespeare, helping you write beautifully about a game of polo with a headless goat for I IGCSC English Language Edexcel. Many thanks for watching Schofield on Shakespeare.